We are Elena and Marina, and we will talk to you about how to destroy the world using Python and a synthetic virus. So it may be <laughs> a little clickbait, but well, it, it could be, it could seem a little clickbait, but, but I assure you that it is not. So, um, as I said, well, um, well Elena. I am Elena, and I'm a specialist in pharmaceutical regulation and quality in the industry. And I am Marina, I am a biomedical engineer uh, in present uh, a PhD student in biophysics and bioengineering. And we both are uh, part of the Python, Python Spain and PyCon Spain uh, working groups. So um, yeah, we are going through all these sections. First, we will start with a little bit of, uh, well, a little bit of concepts of introduction concepts regarding synthetic biology and viruses. Then we will go uh, through very little basic genetics. I promise it's a very quick genetics class, so please don't be afraid. Um, just the basics to understand perfectly the practical case, in which, uh, well, a spoiler, uh, we will create uh, with the help of Python that synthetic virus to destroy the world and the humanity in general. Um, to then uh, have uh, in mind some important considerations, the final conclusions, and the uh, questions and answers uh, round on your part. So we can start with the introduction. As I said, we will uh, have, uh, we will use this tool, the synthetic biology tool, for creating and modifying this virus that, that we will see in a minute. And uh, synthetic biology is the field, the, the field of knowledge uh, that uh, is focused on the design and construction of new biological entities or the modification of the existing ones to achieve new functionalities. And this is a field that is applied to many areas, uh, for example, medicine for drugs and vaccine design, uh, in agriculture for transgenics and engineered plants or, or foods, in industry for sustainably produced fuels, materials, and medicines, and for the environment uh, side, we have also tools for bioremediation. So uh, today we will focus on the medicine uh, part uh, for this virus uh, creation, well, modification, and uh, in order to, to uh, understand the virus part perfectly, well, we have to uh, um, review very quickly what is a virus, which is an infectious agent that can replicate only within a host organism. Uh, viruses are quite weird. They are not considered like a living being, like 100% uh, a living being because they don't have like the basic viral functions of a living being, like nutrition and the interaction with the, with the social environment, like for, like for example, of all, all of us have. But they have the reproduction viral function. But uh, as I said, they need that host organism, that cell or that animal or that organism to replicate. Um, there are many types of viruses. We are not mm, uh, entering in that uh, large, very large, large field. Uh, the only thing that uh, you, well, for your interest, just for you to know, uh, on the right part of the slide, you can see two types of viruses, just uh, to, to, for you to see that we have a genome, a generic content, uh, encapsulated in a capsid. And uh, also, there are more complex uh, viruses with that genome, that uh, capsid, and also an envelope just for protection. So, uh, well, the part that we are interested in in, he, in this introduction con basic concepts is the replication of the viruses. As I said, the viruses need a host organism for uh, the reproduction, the replication. And here you can see the, the, the scheme. Uh, it consists on the virus attaching to a human cell or, well, an animal cell or any cell, uh, in which uh, it releases the generic content. Uh, it this generic content is replicated using the host, the cell uh, mechanisms and resources. And then the new viruses with that, with that replicated uh, genetic content uh, assemble and they are ready to uh, be exported from the host cell and uh, 
well, infect other organisms or, or cells or whatever. So this is all for the introduction. Now, as I said, very quick, uh, I'm so sorry, but very quick uh, mm -hmm. basic genetics class, okay? It is very simple and it is just for you to understand very uh, perfectly the, the practical case. So very basic concepts from the beginning, a gene, which is a segment of DNA that determines a trait. For example, a gene, well, many genes uh, that determines the color of our eyes, for example. We, what is the DNA? The DNA is nothing more than a double helix of bases. Okay? The bases are just letters. All of our DNA is, uh, is composed by four letters. It's a very, very large string of four letters. So uh, in here you can see that four letters, the A, the T, the C, and the G. And something that you need to know is that these letters are complementary. If we have an A in a, in a, in a helix of the, of the DNA, in the other helix, the complementary one, we have a T. And if we have a C, we have a G in the other one, and mm, this way. So, uh, well, we have this DNA, that is the, the one that composes the genes, and these genes are the ones that uh, said that our uh, eyes are green, for example. But it is not so direct. Um, from the DNA, we have like another molecule, a, a, a child molecule, which is the RNA. And this, is, this RNA is the one that gives place to the protein, which is the one that, that makes our eyes green, for example. This RNA is also important in this, in today in this talk. You need to know just that uh, RNA is a single helix that is complementary to the parent DNA. There is. If in the original DNA we have a C, in the RNA we'll have a G. It's complementary, these letters that, are the, that I have explained uh, before. And also another specialty of RNA is that it has use instead of this. Just that, you just need to know that. This is a, a very large field of knowledge. Uh, if you are curious, you can, um, well, get deep into that. Final basic concepts uh, is, uh, which is what is a mutation, which is a letter or letters change regarding, with respect to the original DNA. And with these basic concepts, finally, uh, the final, the end of the genetic class is the CRISPR-Cas. This is important. This is, again, a spoiler, the tool that we uh, are going to use for editing that virus and, uh, well, for destroying the world, basically. So CRISPR-Cas is uh, the cut and paste of DNA and RNA. It's the tool that it is used for uh, gene editing. And uh, it is, uh, well, CRISPR-Cas is uh, consisted uh, by a Cas, a, a happy protein, that is the one that cuts the, the, ADN, the DNA or the RNA. And it is, uh, Cas knows where to, to cut because it has in one hand a guide, uh, which is RNA, this is important. And uh, it knows what to paste in that side that it has cut because in the other hand it has a mold which is DNA. Here you can see, well, you will see an example of this if this is our, our original DNA. In here you can see uh, an example of a guide which is the complementary uh, segment of, of that uh, center uh, uh, area of the original DNA. And for example, we can have this mold that if you look close uh, you can see that the second letter, letter is different from the one of the original DNA. Well, with this guy, with this guide, the cast will cut mm, in these two places, and uh, if we take a look at the mold, we can uh, we can see that the edit, edited DNA will have that second letter in the center of the original DNA change. And uh, well, this is all the genetics that you need to know. I hope you are not, not like this cat right now <laughs> and that you mm, could mm, understand the practical case with these concepts. So now on to the practical case. Now we have, uh, thank you. Now we have this uh, powerful tool, but uh, what can we use it for? And of course, we can only use it for uh, good things, 
but I don't know, maybe you're not having the best day or maybe your boss haven't given you the raise that they, they, will be, they had been promising for the last year, I don't know, and you will decide to worship chaos. So uh, now we're going to explain how you can use this tool for not so good of, of a name. So first of all, we need a virus, and of course we can uh, create a virus from scratch, but uh, biology already offers us a lot of um, a lot of options. In this case, we will be using an adenovirus, which is a virus that are viruses that can be found all around the world. In this specific case, we will be using adenovirus serotype 41, that is known for causing acute gastroenteritis. And uh, in this map, you can see the places in which a significant amount of uh, virus particles have been found in the water supplies. So it can reach the population of those uh, nations uh, faster. Um, no. So, uh, well, uh, before we, st we start um, modifying this adenovirus uh, serotype 41 with the mutations that Elena is, uh, is going to explain in a minute, we will uh, need that uh, generic sequences of this adenotype, uh, adenovirus serotype 41 and the genes that we want to edit or to add to this uh, virus. Um, just uh, for your interest, here I present to you a database, a generic uh, genetics database, uh, which is one of the most used databases in biology in general, uh, in which you can download these generic, uh, genetic sequences. For example, I show you here the, the one of the adenovirus 41. Uh, this is the page of this virus, and if you click in Send to, uh, you can download it in format FASTA. The FASTA, uh, the FASTA files are TXT well, uh, text files, but they have a, um, a, a header, like um, a first line that is a header with the info of the gene. But they are text files. And also, uh, I show you here, well, we will work with Ebola genes. Uh, again, you can search for this Ebola virus. And also, you have like the details of each gene that it, it would be, this would be of interest uh, in the practical case, just in a moment. And again, you can uh, download these genes. In brown, you can see the gene highlighted. And you can, again, save it in FASTA format for working with these um, genes. Um, I'll show you the code. Uh, you can see this code, you have this code, this slides the files that we are going to use in the practical case um, and all the info in this repository of, of my GitHub that you can see here, uh, just in case you want to revise or even try the code with genes of your interest at home or whatever. So I'm going to explain you the code uh, just very quickly, it's very simple. Um, um, for, the for the practical case, we are going to, uh, as Elena said, uh, modify an ex existing vir virus. So, well, this is the main of the code. It simply uh, takes the file, the FASTA file of the, vi of the virus that you want to modify, in this case, the adenovirus uh, serotype 41, and it uh, makes uh, simple modifications. Just as I said, it removes the header of this uh, specific header of the FASTA files, and replaces of the of of all the jumps of the line jumps uh, to have a a string of of the that four letters that we saw before, and this code uh, will uh, give to you uh, the guide and mold uh, that are necessary for the CRISPR experiment, and also for your interest the mutated uh, sequence. Uh, in order to well, and we have. Um, if you take a look at the guide uh, uh, piece of code, you see a DNA to RNA function that it is very simple. It just uh, changes the, the letters of the original DNA to the complementary letters that correspond to the RNA. Always using, as I said in the introduction, use instead of this. And well, the main, well, the principal function, the functions, uh, the function of interest in this case is this one. This is the the function that is going to do all the magic. Uh, in which uh, again uh, we have to select the file of the that gene that we want to add to the adenovirus serotype 41. In this case, again it removes the header and and does the the string of things. And here, uh, the code will ask us uh, the position of the, where, where do we want to add the, um, the gene. 
Uh, well, uh, that's a simple comparison. We are not developers, so they, this, of course, uh, could be done in many better ways. But, well, if that's a quick comparison, if it is an integer, positive on integer or not. And then, uh, well, it defines the guide uh, in DNA that later we will uh, change to RNA. It takes the mutation position that we have um, entered to this script uh, plus minus 25 um, bases, just to not take one letter, because if we take one letter, we will cut in so many places of the DNA, of course. Um, then the mutated, mutated virus sequence is just the uh, sequence of the original virus up to the mutation position, the added gene, and the rest of the original virus. And the mold uh, is that plus minus 25 bases of the guide of the, the where the cast has cut, plus did this add gene sequence that we, were, that we want to add. And well, that is all the code. Uh, it is very simple, but is uh, in order to help us to build this guide mold and all the sequence, sequences that we need for the CRISPR, for CRISPR in the virus, that's it. So now uh, we want to spread the, the, this virus even more. So uh, adenoviruses per se are in, uh, we cannot add, uh, do that with the original, original virus. So we can modify the virus we have, adding then a specific characteristic. For example, we can add a lipid membrane. It's like the envelope of the virus uh, to make it resistant for adverse weather conditions uh, so it can be spread into other nations. Um, this, and this will help to spread the virus to, for example, uh, environments with higher IV um, radiation or a string cold. And for this, we can use, uh, we can add uh, genes BP24, GP, and BP40 from Ebola virus. And we can, now we can see how we can do it. So as an example, well, this is all the same. We are uh, um, in every gene, we want to add it in some position. I'll show you as an example with Python, the adding the BP24 gene from this Ebola virus. We want to add it in the position, the, well, this position, a uh, very large position, uh, just uh, because this is a, a promoter position. Well, biology things that are not quite important right now, but it is a, a strategical position, yes. So, uh, well, you can see here, this is, these are, um, 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 well, there's segments of these FASTA files that I, ha I have said before. Uh, in, in the upper part of the slide, you can see a fragment of the original adenovirus 41, and below you can see that the whole uh, BP4, BP24 gene from this Ebola virus that we want to add in that position. So, with the help of this script of Python, uh, we have uh, in, return, in return the guide uh, in RNA, of course, um, you can see in the fragment of the original adenovirus 41 in, in blue, the, the segment, the plus minus 25 bases that we select uh, according to this position that we entered for the mutation. And the guide is the same, but on, in RNA and complementary to this uh, segment. So with this guide, CAS will cut this segment of the original adenovirus. Then, well, this is a messy uh, slide. I'm so sorry, but I wanted to have like the whole BP40, uh, BP24 gene. You can see uh, that the mold is just that guide segments uh, it's highlighted in blue. And um, in, in the middle, the whole BP40, uh, 24 gene that we want to add in that position. So with this mold, CAS will uh, paste this whole sequence in the virus. In, with this, we will have in our adenovirus this whole gene, this new gene that in, in the beginning it was not there. Um, with Python, we have these sequences automatically. This is something that in clinic uh, is uh, actually done many, in many cases manually. So uh, when we have this, uh, we only need to synthesize in our laboratory these sequences and perform our CRISPR cards CRISPR-Cas experiment in which we will inject in the virus these sequences with the Cas and we will edit the genome of the DNA. 
And also, um, uh, Python, the, script, the Python script gives also the mutated uh, adenovirus, in which, again, you can see the, well, I highlighted the blue uh, segments of the guide for you to, to see it. And in the middle, we have this whole uh, VP2014 gene from the Ebola virus. So, uh, with this example, it's the same for other genes, and we can add more abilities to uh, be in other places of the world. For example, the ability to infect with vectors, uh, like mosquitoes, uh, for, and this will be interesting for areas with uh, heat and humidity, and you can see them highlighted in pink in the map. And uh, we can use uh, uh, genes NS1, NS4B, and NS5 from the dengue virus. And last but not least, uh, we need to add virulins uh, from Ebola virus, and we uh, uh, kill all humanity once and for all. <laughs> so, um, okay, now that you have uh, learned any, uh, all this, uh, there's some uh, things that we have to have in mind. And it's important to know that maybe, like, in a... Um, uh, zombie movie, you always uh, think that you will be the hero that will save all humanity, but the most, uh, the most probably a scenario is that two weeks into the apocalypse, you will be part of the crew of zombies, and it will not be funny, and you will cry. <laughs> but now, in a more serious matter, uh, why this is, uh, that n it's not only that this is really dangerous, but not even possible, because there's a lot, uh, lack of knowledge still in biology. Uh, research in biology, biology is happening right now because we don't really know how the mechanisms of how genes interact with each other or how some genes uh, uh, become so certain proteins. Related to that, uh, biology is really unpredict uh, unpredictable. Cells are complex systems that are not compartmentalized, so it's a mixture of molecules and everything can interact with each other and maybe uh, some molecules interact with other molecules, so you didn't expect that. Also, uh, mutations happen and it can, ha uh, it can happen inside of the genes that can uh, make your virus not to work. And the last part, this is not legal at all. <laughs> we have the Geneva Protocol and the United Nations that are overlooking uh, not only uh, the manufacturing and production and storage of uh, bioweapons and uh, toxic um, molecules, but also give annual reports of the current situation all around the world. And there are like uh, 170 countries right now that contribute to this information and overlook that uh, we don't kill everyone. So now you may be thinking that you waste your time because they cannot be this has not used at all, but it has uses in clinic like gene correction. If you, uh, you have a disease that is caused by, as, by, an, by an specific mutation, you can change that. You can also create, modify uh, cells to be used as treatment for cancer in these specific CAR T cells. Or you can use adenoviruses also to treat cancer not giving them these mutations, but uh, uh, inserting in them genes that can target uh, cancer cells. And uh, also you can control the spread of vectors that spread diseases, modifying the, the, the insects. And now a bit of a same, seamless self-promo, <laughs> if you're more interested in the clinic of this, uh, the clinic use of this, of CRISPR, you can look at, uh, at the pre uh, talk that we did in the uh, PACONES of 2023, that it's in Spanish but has English subtitles. So the final conclusions, uh, really quickly, is that uh, synthetic biology can be used as a powerful tool. And uh, one of those tools is gen editing um, using CRISPR-Cas that can be done uh, using Python. This has a lot of uses. One of them is unless in chaos, because we can create a living being on demand. But we always have to have in mind that we have a responsibility and also um, legal, legally, <laughs> you only ha can use this power to do good in the world. So thank you very much. <laughs> Very cool talk, so uh, don't do this at home, I guess. <laughs> um, there's a microphone in the front and already somebody there, so please ask your question. Thank you for excellent talk. It was a very fun example. Um, 
And what I would like to point out is that actually, and, and I think everyone should do it at home, um, but in a, in a real world scenario, actually, you won't be able to CRISPR-Cas inside the virus uh, for a very simple reason, because virus lacks protein machinery, and mm -hmm. the CRISPR-Cas is relying on the protein machinery of partially mammalian, partially like bacterial cell to uh, edit. So what you would actually do for IAV production, at least what we do in the lab, is uh, you will synthesize this um, piece. You can put it in a little circular vector, and you have two uh, flunking sequences that would allow your virus to like um, be happy inside the host. And, and, and this is how you would uh, basically put this uh, mutation in. So, and the CRISPR-Cas is an excellent tool, and it's, but it's mostly for more complex mammalian genomes. But it is a, is a cool example to, to, to show. Yeah. So. Well, thank you for, uh, for explaining that. Yeah, this is only a silly example, and the least thing we do is that you try to become bioterrorists with that. So <laughs> uh, I'm not joking when I say that anything of this is it's not that it is forbidden to do, but you wouldn't have a result that could kill anyone because you wouldn't have a virus. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so it's for the safety. That's, that's very smart. Thank you so much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes, go ahead, ask your question. Hola. Um, my question is, when this will be possible, we could do the same thing to reverse the virus, right? To <laughs> like, you, you, you're doing this silly example because it's, it's silly and it's nice and it's clickbaity, as you said. Um, but in, in the other side of the conversation is we should and could and will do this to reverse something like the Ebola virus, which is very deadly, as we all know. Yes, and this is something that it was tested for the COVID, for the SARS-CoV-2 <laughs> pandemic. Um, yes, of course, this is used for reversing that viral lens and that infectious potential of the viruses. Uh, the CRISPR-Cas was a tool that was used, for example, with the, with the COVID uh, pandemic. And as Elena explained, uh, there are many clinical uh, uses of this. So this is used in reality. We have a very silly, well, yeah, clickbait example, just for mm, giving it the attention that we uh, think that it is, uh, it is worth. But yeah, of course, this, this could be used, and it is used. It is actually used in the clinic and for viruses, as you said. Hi, uh, thank you very much for the talk. Uh, incredibly polished slides. Um, <laughs> yeah, really, really good. Um, uh, probably very basic question. It looked like the segment that you replaced uh, with, the, with the genes was what you were putting in is l or was longer than what you were taking out. Is that correct or is that just me reading those slides? Do you wrong? mean the guide, the mold, or, or what, which segment? Uh, Sorry. The, so if you, the, uh, where you had like the slides uh, these <laughs> ones. It looks like the fragment, the top fragment, is shorter than the like the following two fragments. Does that is does changing the the length of the gene, the total thing? Like, so you mean uh, where we are when we are introducing the new gene yes. that it, if it is a problem that it is like longer? Yeah. No, it's no problem. Just you have to to have like in the CRISPR-Cas system the mold, and well, it is most commonly used for just single letters or uh, specific mutations, but, well, in theory, I think it is possible. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we are not geneti generation, geneticians, but I think it is possible. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> um, just very, very quickly, uh, same less promo again. Uh, we uh, are looking to see you at PyCon Spain in October. Uh, we have tickets available, so <laughs> you can come to PyCon Spain. We are very nice people. <laughs> yes, everybody go to PyCon Spain. <laughs>